Let's take a look at simplifying an expression using the rules of exponents from a easy versus a hard example. Now, there are many examples that I could have chosen using the rules of exponents to simplify an expression, but I chose these two just to make sure that we could cover some basic rules of exponents. So as I'm going to work through these step by step, I'm going to make sure I explain what rules of exponents I am using so therefore you can understand and make sure you can apply them on your own. So let's go and start with the first example. And when I'm, if I was simplifying this expression, what I always tell my students is I always like to go ahead and um, get rid of or simplify what's inside the parentheses first. You could apply the power to quotient rule first, which would take this two, and you would um, square the numerator as well as square the denominator. But again, the way that I'm going to approach this problem is to simplify this in first. So the first one is going to be knowing my negative powers. If I have x raised to the negative n, I can rewrite that as a positive power by using the reciprocal. So I can rewrite that as one over x to the n. And similarly, if I had one over x to the negative n, I could rewrite that as a positive power by putting it in the numerator, rewriting it as x to the n over one, all right? So the first thing I recognize here is if I have x to the negative second, well, if I put that in the denominator, it's gonna be down here, right? So therefore I can simplify that further. So the first step I would do is I would just put this in the denominator. So now I have x squared, times a x to the fourth. And again, we're still going to have everything going squared. Now I just need to remember how to multiply exponents. And again, do not make the mistake of multiplying their powers. If I have x to the n times x to the m, the rules of exponents tell us to simply add those two powers together. So that's going to be x to the n plus m. So in this case, two plus four is going to be a x to the six. So now I have a one over x to the six raised to the second power. Now, again, we're still going to use this power to quotient rule, but what makes this a little bit easier than if we were to apply it from the beginning is I have a one up here, right? So the power to quotient rule says if you have a quotient raised to a power, then you can use that power in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So I have x to the six going to be squared. Now, Remember, when we're multiplying exponents, we're going to add the powers. But if I take a power raised to another power, I'm going to go ahead and multiply them. So in this case, if I had like x to the m raised to the nth power, that's simply going to be x to the m times n, all right? So 6 times 2 is going to be 12, and then we're going to have 1 squared, which is just 1. So the final answer over here is going to be 1 over x to the 12th power. Now let's go and take a look at the hard example, okay? And again, it's really more hard. It's just because there's more of them. We have more variables than just x's. We have x, we have y, we have z. And, and we're going to apply these properties over and over and over again. However, um, in this case, what I want to simply do in this, uh, in this case, the way that I'm going to approach it is actually going to be a little bit differently because I can't get rid of these negatives at this moment, right? I can put the negative in the denominator, but remember, if I'm going to do that, this exponent is still being raised to this positive power. So in this example, I'm actually going to apply the power to product rule first. So the power to product rule is simply stated, if I have a times b raised to the n, then I have to take each and every one of these terms to that nth power. So that's going to be a to the nth times a b to the nth. Now, I didn't explain it over here, but it's the same thing with the power to quotient rule. If I have a divided by b to the nth power, then that's going to be a to the n over a b to the n. All right. Now, again, I don't want to put these in the new denominator to make them positive, but then because then I have to still keep that three there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this, uh, the, uh, the power rule in this numerator first. So what this is going to look like is it's going to be, now again, this is going to be pretty big. So bear with me here. Let's draw a nice little line so I don't get them confused over here. All right, so this is going to be x to the negative third cubed times a y to the negative first cubed times a z to the negative second cubed times a y cubed. Now again, notice that that's a y to the first power, right? So I could do you could write a y to the first power cubed, but or you could just put that three there and just recognize it from there. Then I'm going to have a x squared cubed and then a z to the zero power, which really technically is just going to be one, and that's going to be cubed as well. Now, I'm not going to do anything with the denominator here yet because I want to figure out what's going to be negative, and then I'll go ahead and switch everything from the numerator and the denominator. So my denominator is going to be a negative two. Let's draw my twos so they don't look like z's. So it's a negative two, z, x squared, 
y to the negative fourth power. Okay, so again, remember using this, uh, using the um, power rule of exponents, which I stated right down here. Whenever we have an exponent raised to another power, we're just going to multiply them. So in this case, I have x to the negative, so negative three times three is going to be an x to the negative ninth power. Over here, I'm going to have y to the negative third power. I have z to the negative sixth power, y to the third power, um, x to the sixth power, and then y, z to anything raised to zero power is just going to be one. And one cubed is going to be one. I don't really need to multiply everything by one, so I'm just going to leave that off. Now I have a negative two, z, x squared, y to the negative fourth. Now, one thing we could do is we could apply the quotient rule of exponents. But before I do that, I like to get rid of the negatives. So remember what I showed over here, if I have x to the n times x to the m, you're going to add the powers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you have x to the n divided by x to the m, then you're going to subtract the powers, right? But I don't wanna do that yet. What I wanna do is I wanna get rid of all these negatives, right? I wanna use this rule to simplify first because I much rather use the product rule rather than using the quotient rule with negatives. A lot of students will make mistakes on that. And you might deem this problem to be difficult because you're trying to use the quotient rule with negative powers. Mistakes are going to happen. So I don't want that to happen for you. So what I'm simply gonna do is if it's negative, I'm gonna put it in the denominator and make it positive. If it's a negative in the denominator, I'm gonna put it in the numerator to make it positive. So the only thing left up here would just be a y cubed. And let's go that a little bit further down. So that'd be a y cubed x to the sixth. And then this is a negative, so I can put that up there. Then my denominator, let's see, I have this negative two, I have this z, I have this x squared. Then I'm gonna bring down this x to the ninth and this y to the negative third. And what else? A z to the positive sixth. Okay, so we got a lot of things going on in the denominator. Now, up here in the numerator, I can simplify that, right? Now, again, you might be looking at this, say, Miss McLogan, like they're not next to each other. Well, the cool thing, ladies and gentlemen, with multiplication is three times four is the same as four times three, right? So I can rearrange them how I want to. So I can rewrite everything next to each other. So I'll do this as a y cubed times y to the fourth times x to the sixth. In the denominator, I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's put these z's next to each other and the x's next to each other. So therefore that's a negative two, z to the first power. I'll put a one in there so we make sure we don't lose it. That's gonna be, why did I write a negative three? Three, y to the third, what I do, y third, that's supposed to be a positive three. Sorry, I made a mistake there. Now, again, you could simplify things. I'm sure in the comments, you guys could be like, oh, you can just combine those to zero. I get it, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just following a process. If I see it negative, I put in the denominator. We will address all of those, but more exam more practice that you get, you might be able to simplify that rather quickly and see that's gonna go to one. I get it, trust me. Um, but I, I'm just kind of working through this step by step and there might be some redundancy, but that's okay. That helps me avoid mistakes. And also for you, I want you to avoid mistakes. It's not about doing things fast, it's about doing them correctly in this video. So I have two to the first power and then I'm gonna Z, and then I have a Z to the sixth power. I'll have a x squared, x to the ninth, and then I have my y cubed, okay? So now let's go and combine things using that product rule. Remember when you're multiplying with the same base you and different power, or it doesn't matter if the powers are different or not, you add the powers. So up here, I'm going to have a y to the seventh power, x to the sixth, divided by a negative two. One plus six is going to be a seven, so z to the seventh power. Um, I have x to the 11th, and then in this case, I'll have a y to the third power. Okay, now I can use my quotient rule, right? So if I have the powers in the same, or in the numerator and the denominator, I subtract the powers. Now, if it's positive, it's gonna remain in the numerator. If it's going to be a negative value, we're gonna put it in the denominator to make it positive. So here I have y to the seventh divided by y cubed is going to be a y to the fourth. That's gonna remain in my numerator. X to the uh, six minus four is going to be a two. So that is also gonna remain in my denominator. And you can see there's nothing, there's no other z's in my numerator or my numerator, so that's gonna remain in the denominator. So I'll have my negative two, z to the seventh power, and those got simplified, those got simplified. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you simplify 
that expression using the rules of exponents. Now, if you want more examples of simplifying expressions using the rules of exponents, check out the videos I have for you down below. And if you want more examples of me working through easy versus hard examples, then check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.